Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. My name is Jana and on my channel I show all different kinds of DIYs. In today's video I want to show you how I make ceramic soap trays using stoneware clay. You might have seen my other projects where I use air dry clay, but air dry clay is really hard to get waterproof. There are ways to seal them with different kinds of varnish, but if you want to create food safe or proper waterproof um, pottery, it's worth giving the real clay a go. Stoneware clay needs to be fired in a kiln though. So if you, just like me, don't own your own kiln, you can try to find a pottery studio or person in your area that has a kiln and offers a burning service. There are also some websites for that, for example Kilnshare, that might help you find a local one in your area. But now let's get started. I start the pottery process by wedging the clay. That's important to prevent any air enclosures as they could make the pieces explode in the kiln. I place the clay on a kitchen towel so the clay doesn't get stuck to my workboard as I roll it into a slab. To make sure the slab has an even thickness, I place some dowels or in this case pencils on the sides. Like that my dowel or rolling pin can roll over them and I end up with a slab that is about 6 mm thick. I also make sure to flip the clay regularly. If I find any air bubbles in the clay, I pop them with a needle tool or an exacto knife and smoothen out the slab again. To compress the clay particles and make the slab more sturdy, I use my metal rib and smoothen out the surface even more. If the slab is really soft and wet, I let it sit for a little bit before I keep working. That makes the clay keep its shape better. The shapes for the little soap dishes I freestyle a little bit, using a soap bar to make sure the size is about right. The clay will shrink in the kiln between 10 to 15 percent, depending on the clay I use, so I make sure to cut the shapes a bit larger than I want them to be later. Then I remove the excess clay around the cutouts. I want to give the soap trays some holes for drainage, so I use my needle tool first to trace out some fun shapes and once I'm happy with it I commit and cut out the shapes with an exacto knife. For the smaller round holes I use a reusable plastic straw that is nice and sturdy and just punch through some holes. Next I'm creating the legs. I start by rolling out a coil and then cut it into four equal pieces. These little pieces I round off on one side. The non-rounded sides will be attached to the soap tray. While I let the feet rest for a little so they can firm up a bit, I use a wet sponge to smoothen out the edges and clean up the little unevennesses of the trays. As long as the clay is still soft and lays flat, I stamp in my signature with some rubber letter stamps. That's important so people know who made this masterpiece, but also for the burning service, the pottery studio might want you to have your name on it. To merge two clay pieces together, it's always important to score the touching points 
and either wetten them to soften up the clay or use slip, which is basically liquid clay. Then I press on the legs and wiggle them a bit until I feel that the clay is properly stuck together. With my fingers and a brush I smoothen out the seam and make sure the legs are connected as seamlessly as possible. Now I can flip the trays and adjust them so all four legs are touching the surface evenly. I also give the trays a slight bend so the soap will not slide off so easily later. There are different ways to color and decorate your clay pieces. So today I'm working with Engo, which is basically a white or colored slip. And the color of the slip can actually change during the fire process. So the dark blue, for example, looks pink before. To be able to paint on Engo, the clay needs to be leather hard. So quite firm, but still a bit moist. I use a little brush to paint different patterns. With the pattern I kind of follow the shapes of the cutouts, so dots, little strokes, and some Kipfel, or at least that's what Austrians call their baking goods that have this half moon shape. Let me know in the comments if there is a name for that in your language. I only know the French croissant. Now the pieces need to dry for a couple of days. To be able to burn them, they need to be bone dry. So that means no moisture left. The drying times can vary depending on humidity, temperature, thickness of your pieces. And the stonework clay normally needs to be fired two times. So the first firing is called the bisque fire, which is at a lower temperature. And after that, you are able to glaze the pieces and then they need to go into the second fire, which is depending on the clay and the glaze at a higher temperature. So after the first firing, I picked up my pieces and brought them home to glaze them. To make sure the pieces are dust and fat free, I washed them in some clear water before. It's important to make sure that the bottom stays glaze free, as otherwise the pieces will get stuck to the oven in the firing process. I use a pen that I lay on the table to mark a few millimeters at the bottom as a guideline for the glazing. I use a transparent glaze that I stir up well before I apply it with a fan brush. Here it still looks white, but it will become transparent in the second firing. The glaze can either be applied with a brush, then the glaze requires two to three coats, or dipped, like I did on the last one. After the glaze is dry, I take my soap dishes outside to clean up unevennesses in the glaze. The glaze dust is a very fine mineral dust that can get airborne. So I also wear a mask to make sure not to breathe the dust in. By rubbing over little bumps or small air bubbles, I even out the glaze. And then all there is left is to bring them back to the pottery studio one more time for the glaze firing. And this is how they looked after.
Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or tips and tricks that you want to share with us. If you're interested in what else I've been pottering lately, you can head over to my Instagram and check that out. And feel free to like and subscribe. And I'm really looking forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.